Welcome to Ghosts and Grit. I'm joined by Jason Muse on this episode. He's one of my favorite people. I've known Jay for over 20 years. We got sober together, we've lived together, we've hunted ghosts together now, and Bigfoot and Skinwalkers. I call him the Forrest Gump of Hollywood. He somehow has worked with everyone, been everywhere, done it all twice. He's such an amazing person and he's got the best sense of humor you could ever ask for. All right, Jason motherfucking Muse. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm excited. I appreciate you having me on here for real. No worries. Um, and I love it. I love, I mean, love the, you know, I figured that we were, well, I, I knew you'd have the have it in your office in like a studio, but I thought you'd just have a desk, but I shouldn't have thought that. I should have expected <laughs> nothing but gloriousness. It's the vibe. Dude, yeah, it's the vibe. exactly. This paint, like this picture dude, the, painting. Dude, this is, is my favorite, like one of my favorite talking points with our yeah. guests. That's AI, dude. We AI'd my face. And is, this is 3D printed. This there, is isn't 3D it? printed, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Pete, who works works with me, his neighbor's son did that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I thought it was actually pretty tight. No, it's it's good stuff. And again, it's always, um, you know, it's fun, but it's it, it's it, it's it's like a nice place to come. I'm sure for you, I've this. I'm only here once, but I know when we were doing our podcast and we'd meet in Kevin's living room, even though it was just in his living room, it was just sort of nice because we the setup to sit down and chat every morning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is beautiful. How long? How long did you do your podcast with Kevin? We did, you know, we did a few. Well, we did it live mm -hmm. for almost eight years. Wow. I believe, yeah, touring around Australia, London, and all that stuff. It actually was more of a live show mm. than podcast. Now we started to do another podcast, but it's been tough because Kevin's been traveling a bunch. Um, he's been in Jersey a bunch, and and he got a new place and all this stuff. But anyway. Uh, it was called. It's called Father's Day. We did four episodes. Is it like a more like father focusing kind of podcast? Yeah, like we were trying to talk about talking about the excitement of of having a new uh, new kid. Yeah, another kid. Um, but also, again, talking about Logan and stuff and some of my some of the things I didn't expect as a dad. Um, and you know, it's still, still, it's like each phase. I'm not expecting things. Oh yeah, dude. That I thought it's like it, it's. It's so amazing being a father, but at the same time, it's, and again, I, I, anyone who's a parent, I guess, knows, but it's just like, it, it's a lot, like, mm. dealing with, again, I told you before, and I, I guess, I don't know if I'm ready to mention that here, but again, dealing with those situations and how fast she wants to grow up and, and her, tan like, getting upset at stuff, and then I'm, like, stuck, because logically I know, like, this isn't going to be good for her, but I don't want to disappoint her. And I've struggled with that a lot more so than yeah. my wife. My wife's like, no, you can't do this. You can't have this. You can't have sugar, blah, blah, blah. And then she'll be like, daddy, just, I just want one sip. I want to try. I'm like, no, you can't. And then I'm like, she'll be like whining and I'll think about it. And I'm like, but I can't. It's, it's like, you know, she can't have root beer. Like, I don't want her to try soda, <laughs> but she'll whine about it and I'll think about it. And it, it bums me out that I even think about it. But it's like, it, it those little tiny struggles that, yeah. Anyway, dude, so it's I I fully relate to that. I mean, yeah. it's you know having the four girls like yeah. Pearl. She's eleven now. She's going into middle school, and that's wow. like fucking weird. I mean, it's at her same school. It's just like a different campus. Yeah. But it's uh you know all this stuff's starting to come yeah. up. You know, she's like having the full body changes, yeah. and like it's it's wild to see. And you know, Andy, who's uh, I think a similar age to Logan. She's um eight. Logan's eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah Andy's eight as well. Yeah. And it's like. And it's funny what you were just saying, how like yeah. girly girly she is. Andy's the same fucking way. Andy, yeah. Andy walked in from camp and she said, she goes, I'm a sleigh baddie queen. And I was like, what? <laughs> she goes, I'm a sleigh baddie queen. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? And she's like, you know, she walks around and like, if, if she's that kid that if you can wear as little as possible and like yeah. get out in society and function, that's her. It's yeah. It's, I, and I don't know. It's like, I try to ask, sit her down and be like, what makes you want to wear like this yeah. outfit? What makes you want to put makeup on? Like already you're eight. Don't grow up too fast. Yeah. She'll be like, but you don't understand. You don't understand. You have no style and you're, you're a boy, you know, like that type of <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, all right, but, there's no reason to wear a crop top. You don't need yeah. to wear a crop top totally. like right now. Wear mm -hmm. a dress. And then I always point out too, I'll be like, she'll be like, oh, my so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so is wearing crop tops. I'm like, 
no, I just dropped, was about, to, I'm like pulling up to school and I'm looking at five people you mentioned and they're all wearing hoodies. t-shirts, <laughs> hoodies, dresses. Uh, it's like, it's not true. Where you're at with social media and the kids, are you going to you gonna let your kids get into it? Uh, I, no, probably, I mean, she really wants a phone. That's the other thing. She's been begging me for a phone. Um, Wait, have I told uh, you the hack? No. Dude, uh, get her an Apple Watch. There's school mode on the Apple Watch. Oh. And school mode, you schedule it from... You know, when your daughter starts at 8 a.m. Yeah. So from 8 a.m. to like five minutes before pickup, mm. they can't text, they can't receive texts, they can't make calls or receive. No, no, it's just a straight watch. And then five minutes before pickup, it'll activate. And so like just in case like something changes at school, yeah, whatever, yeah, they can yeah. communicate. Because I just I know she'll just want to play Roblox. My 11 year old mm. is so fucking addicted to that game. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Any one of uh, her friends I or talk about Roblox, even people will meet. She's at camp. I'm picking her up, and she'll be like, hey, I just met these girls. This is so-and-so and so-and-so. And, so and, so. and the, while I walk up to them, they're talking about Roblox. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable yeah. how much the kids love Roblox. And she'll be like, get me diamonds, get me diamonds. Because, you know, the diamonds buy the outfits. And it's crazy because I thought, like, Fortnite skins were expensive. Yeah. Like, you know, you put $80 and you get, like, 13,000 V-Bucks, which gets you, like, five skins. Mm -hmm. I swear I got her a $50 uh, Robux card. And it literally, she showed me, she's like, look what I got with the, you know, 100,000 diamonds you got me. It's, like, literally, like, an, a tiara, an, a wand, and a dress. And I'm like, wait, that's it? She's like, yeah, I need more. I'm like, no. Yeah, it's, it's evil, grim. dude. It, like, it's really they've they're making it. They figured it out. Yeah. Roblox figured out the the recipe to make money and to like hook the kids because again, they gotta be like fifty dollars for three things. And they, it, she scrolled and was like, I want this. This comes out in September. This is a Halloween outfit that comes out oh in October. God. And they only have it for three weeks and then it's gone. And I'll never be able to get it again. Can you please get me dime? Like, and but the thing is, it's like I'm always like no. And then she'll be like, please, please. And I'm like, oh god, maybe I should. It's not so bad. Maybe I get you know. These are <laughs> think the about struggles. all the shit I buy. <laughs> but anyway, so it it is it is, it's more. There's more involved than I even expected besides yeah. keeping them alive, clothing them. I don't know. There, there's so much. I mm -hmm. mean, I could sit and talk about, like I said, I, that's why I, so Kevin, I said, we got to talk about, you have a kid, I have a kid, we should talk about stuff. But I really could talk about it for hours because there's so many, again, different levels of things that I didn't expect yeah. or, or plan on, like, again, like, what she wants to wear is she doing good at school and then me like is she making friends is, is people want like i had no idea like, i remember she, she had a fight with one of her best friends and the girl literally shut her down and wouldn't talk to her for weeks and she like got picked up she's like please pick me up from camp i picked her up and she was crying and like literally i started like tearing up and yeah. it's like i had no idea like her sadness like and again, I was like, I want to talk to her dad and see if we can fix this. Like, I had no idea. Like, and then I'm like, is that the right thing to do? Do I want to get involved or do I let her go through it? It's like, there is so much. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. It, it's, it really is, uh, <laughs> it, it is crazy how much, for me anyway, my life is consumed by yeah. and you got just four. the kids. Yeah. <laughs> you got four. I mean, you'll probably be there. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I don't, I Are can't. you going to get the snips -a no, 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 the wife asked me, but I don't, I don't think, I told her, I don't think I'm that worried about, I wouldn't mind another kid, but I'm not, like these, the good thing You're is, good. the nice got... thing is, the two we planned, like mm -hmm. we planned on Logan, we tried three months, we had Logan, which was, yeah. we were blessed with that. But I wouldn't plan on a third. Mm. But again, I tell her, I'm like, I don't wanna get snipped. If it happens, it happens. Sure. Like I'm not against having another one, but I just, I don't know if my heart can take it. Dude. Like I'm literally still like, I thought I'd get over the like, everyone's like the second one will be easier. Like I, I'm still like checking him if he's breathing and like mm -hmm. I still check on her. She's eight and I still go in sometimes because <laughs> yeah. she usually wakes up in the middle of the night. So if she doesn't wake up and it's like five in the morning, you're I'm like, like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, why didn't she wake up and like, yeah. she usually comes in and she'll be like, daddy, can you put me back to sleep? And I'm like, all right, you're, <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, go to yeah. Sleep. <laughs> yeah but, she, but when she doesn't, it's like, I, so I'm just saying like, and just constantly like, yeah, there's there's a lot, but it's fun it, though, man. It it's and it's been cool from like I mean, because you and I we've known each other fucking over twenty years at this point. It's awesome. And then we, yeah. you know, we kind of yeah. we lost touch for a while, and yeah. I had kids, and then you. But it's like I really, I really enjoy, yeah. you know, when we 
connect and yeah. hearing about how you are as a dad and yeah. seeing how you are as a dad yeah. it's really like i love seeing that because yeah. like i for me like with you it's like it it kind of took you to like a different level the way yeah. i see it like you kind of ramped you like fuck yeah like i'm i'm in yeah well it's in, yeah it's it's interesting to think back when we first started hanging out and what we were like oh my god to now right it's like such a it's such a different you know it's just like crazy i just saw and not, not that it matters but i just saw um uh, milo yeah which i haven't seen him i haven't seen him in probably 10 not 10 years but whatever maybe five yeah. what a different like totally different person dude. Yeah. like yeah. what like i told him i was like dude i'm really happy like he seems like so much for people listening jay and i and a couple other guys all lived in a house together off of the Sunset Strip back in 2003, mm. uh, three, three or four. Yeah, yeah, four, about four, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, we were all just newly sober dirtbags, yeah. just hammering <laughs> energy drinks, playing video games and poker yeah. and fucking... So it was funny. basically like a sober frat house, and it was yeah. hilarious. It was fun. We had tons of computers set up, and we'd all just sit there and play poker yeah. for hours. And yeah. it was it was a lot of fun, though. And it really, I think it was really helpful for me in the beginning too, like being around so many sober people. Yeah. And uh, we just all went out and kept each other busy and drank coffee and went to clubs out. every yeah. fucking night. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so, um, it's yeah, but it, it's it's definitely been. And then I feel like I didn't see you for a while. Yeah. And then we we. We did the Bigfoot, which was so much fun. Yep. Um, and then we did the Skimwalkers. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one. I don't. I mean, we, have they been? Yeah. No. Wait. Yeah. They they come out. It's gonna come out uh, October, November. So yeah, we've got another. People see it. Yeah, everyone, you gotta check it out. It it was a lot of fun. It's it's so much fun. It's it's so funny because I just saw um, Jamie on. And it was Criminal Minds, I okay. think. Okay. And he's so funny. It just it's just funny because hanging with Jamie on on the set and doing our stuff, you know, it's like he's not so, but in this, he does really well. He plays a serial killer. And it's like just like he's like, hello. Like it's just so funny to see. But anyway, um, but yeah, Jamie Kennedy's in it and it was so much I mean, again, it's such a blast. So hopefully. Yeah. Um, so what you've been working on outside of uh, you know, acting. So I've been doing a little bit of acting, but I've been doing uh, a couple, you know, I've been having fun doing uh, a couple of comic conventions. Um, and Kevin and I have been doing our podcast there. So we still do, uh, I should have mentioned that, we've been doing Get Old still, mm -hmm. but it's sort of a different format and we we do it at conventions. But I've been also doing my stand-up. I've been, I do a, it's not really stand-up comedy as much as storytelling slash stand-up comedy. It's called J Muse and his amusing stories, um, <laughs> it, which has been awesome. It's funny because I see all, a lot of times I'll go to Zanies and all these different comedy clubs and either Jamie's coming after, excuse me, coming after me, Jamie Kennedy, or he just left. Um, but anyway, it's been fun. It's like some, I really feel like I've been sort of leaning towards that more. I'm trying to get better at it, but I've been doing that for about almost two years, a year and a half now. Nice. And I like it. It's great. I go out, go out and do like four shows, like, two uh you know a sh two shows back to back friday or, or thursday and then friday or friday and saturday um and that's been a lot of fun that's been i've been doing that more than anything else um and i still do stuff with kevin uh here and there we do like again we're trying to get the do another episode of the father's day podcast um there's four episodes right now but then then this uh february kevin and i are doing a cruise which I'm very excited about. I've never been on a cruise before. Um, so I've never been on a boat, never been on a cruise, but besides the cruise, it's gonna be fun because it's not like, hey, let's just go on the boat and and hang out. It's like, Kevin's gonna be there. There's a bunch of guests. Um, here, let me tell you when it is exactly. Um, it's gonna be February 23rd to the 26th, 2024. And it's Miami to Nassau. Ooh. Yeah, so, and uh, Jason Lee's gonna be going, Ethan Suplee, Brian O'Halloran, Jeff Anderson, Ralph Garman. There's gonna be a bunch of podcasts. There's gonna be a bunch of uh, tournament. We're gonna try to set up a, a LAN party for like uh, gaming, maybe nice. some tournaments for Fortnite and Call of Duty. So there's gonna be some uh, blackjack and some gambling and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, I, I'm excited. There's going to be a movies on there. You know, movies is in Kevin's movies. Um, he had to come up with like he couldn't use like, hey, let's go to Burger King. So he had to come up with his own 
store place. So he has movies he came up with, Mooby the cow. Yep. And there's the you know the cock smoker chicken sandwich. You know the the <laughs> the hater tots. You know there's all these funny names Wait, for the food. Why has Kevin not <laughs> actually opened a movies? Well, he he has and he hasn't. He hasn't opened up an actual place permanently but it's awesome they've been doing these pop-ups all over so okay. Sa san diego comic-con the tin roof uh restaurant bar did a movies and so they like put up the menu they they put a bunch of movie cows all over and they tried to make it look like a movies and other places too a couple other cons have done it uh Dude, comic I, conventions i feel like you could do what like mr beast did with the beast burger how you just it's on postmates everywhere but you can yeah. just it's like a kitchens at restaurants will make it and you can order it well they did they had done it with this one company that you could order it and get it like you could order it for a limited time yeah. and get it shipped to you and it was a nice and stuff and it did okay but the problem is is you know it's tough some if it's being shipped in a box and yeah, it's so can... it might come come messed up so people were like oh my gosh i got my stuff i was so excited but it was you know Gross. this leaked <laughs> and this happened or whatever so there has been a bunch of pop-ups and there'll be a pop-up on the boat so while you're on the boat there'll be a movies and you can get the food and all that stuff um I i'm excited i mean again they go from miami to nassau um, and just to hang out and stuff. I, again, there's a bunch. There's a bunch more people. There's gonna be stand up comedy. Um, A. J. Wilkerson. This kid is awesome. Like a couple years ago, um, this guy won a contest um, in his hometown to open up for me. So he opened up for me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy is really funny. I want him to be. Um, like I wonder if he can host for me in other places. Is he willing to travel? So I asked him, and he's he's like, I would love to do that. So he's been opening for me for a year now or so um and everyone loves him and he started growing his instagram and he's super and i knew this from when i saw him he, i'm like this kid's gonna be doing his own stuff and he's gonna be like sorry jay i can't open up for you and he just opened up for burt kreisner wow ten thousand people wow first night the second night he opened up for four thousand so he did 15 minutes in front of burt kreisner yeah. and burt kreisner gave him a big shout out saying like so again i i saw That's him in cool, it, man. but he's gonna be doing this, some stand up on our boat um and this jake rubel who's another guy who like opens up with me uh hollywood babylon education all these other podcasts kevin d does uh with other people i don't know i'm super stoked because again it's like you get to go on a boat go on a cruise but there's gonna be podcasts and stand-up comedy and gambling all the things you and, like <laughs> exactly and there's gonna be swimming and all sorts of stuff i'm gonna be wearing my speedo and there you go no, i'm just kidding <laughs> get that banana hammock out, yes bro. so check it out if you get a chance uh <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i could wear a speedo i don't think i could rock it like i think you now my dad like my belly and dude you know, you know what i should do for your uh your muse stories your amusing stories I should get you the episode of the Osbournes in Hawaii, and you can do a whole fucking awesome. <laughs> video presentation on that episode. <laughs> so much fun! That was honestly what an experience uh, that was. Yeah, that was a, the good old the good old days. <laughs> um, you actually have a really funny story about the first time you and I met. Yes. Um, so again, I'll never forget this too, and it's and it's funny, but it's at the same time it was super surreal. So the first time, so again picture i'm i'm like this kid who grew up in jersey and and i've never like never been to la or anything and i even remember the first time i came to la um i came out to audition for mall rats they wanted me to audition for mall rats kevin's like no I, the character's jay and it's written for jay um but they were like look he's never done anything we're worried like he has to audition but the point is is i've never been to california i've been jersey to florida once and i've been to new york like twice um, so all I knew from California, you know, you watch 90210 and you watch Beverly Hills Cop and there's palm trees and it's beautiful and amazing and there's movie stars and all this stuff. I land in California and they have a limo for me, dude. And I'm like, this is crazy. And I'm like, I get this moment of like a rush over me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in California. This is beautiful. Driving down the street with palm trees. And then no lie, the song comes on. Welcome to the hotel. Anyway, so the point is, is like, I'm super stoked. And I'm just pointing that out to show you like how I felt as coming to California. How, so wait, what's even more, yeah. But how how did you end up like 
Because you grew, did you grow up with Kevin? Yeah, so Kevin and I w- grew up in the same town, Highlands, New Jersey. I lived like a block, two blocks from him. But he's four years older, so I didn't really know him. I knew of him. Mm-hmm. It was always like, oh, there's that Smith guy. He In our school, I was a freshman. He was a senior. He would write... Excuse me. There's like three talent shows through the school year, and he would write these super funny sketches. So I only knew him as that. Like, there's the guy that writes those funny sketches for the talent shows, um, Smith. You know, and so I, and he always says he knew me as there's that dirty boy Jason Mewes who <laughs> threw a rock through the pharmacy window. You know, what I mean? <laughs> um, so like we, you knew of each other, but we didn't know each other. And then he graduated, started working at the community center in our town. Community center is where you go after school as a kid so your parents get off work and they pick you up, but they had people supervising the kids, board games, foosball, pool table, and they give you snacks. So I used to go hang out there until my grandma got, like I could go home to my grandma and my aunt. Um, Kevin started working there. So I started getting to know Kevin there and Walter Flanagan and Brian Johnson from Comic Book Man. Wow. So I get to know the three of them and stuff. I'm a little kid. Anyway, I, long story short, because that's a whole other story too, but he starts working. He leaves there, starts working at Quick Stop where Clerks was filmed. We start hanging out. He invites, he goes, hey man, you want to help me on Sundays? I have to make this newspaper, it's the big paper, and I hate doing it by myself. And I was like, sure, I'll do it. And I was a little kid. I was like, 13, 14 probably at this point. He's like, I'll give you $5 and you can have like snacks and stuff when we're done. So I go help him on Sunday. We get to know each other uh, more and more. And he's like, hey, I'm writing this script and you have this really weird sense of humor. He's like, I really wonder if people, in is it just Jersey funny or do just Brian Walter and I find you funny because we have a weird sense of humor and you have a weird, or would people in California find you funny or Seattle, whatever. He's like, I'm writing this movie and I wrote a part based on you of things you've said and done and I want you to be in the movie. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Cause again, it wasn't like now. We're just people... fucking around with friends. Yeah. And it's like, and it, it was even like, no one even talked really about movies. Kevin talked about movies. He loved movies, but it ain't like now when people are like, I'm doing something and I'm going to, you know, get 20 grand and we're going to put it on YouTube or I'm going to get Kickstarter to raise it mm. and I'm going to use my iPhone. It was like literally VHS shoulder cameras back there, you know? Anyway, he wrote the movie, he wrote the script, he gave it to me and he's like, we're going to start filming at the end of the night. I raised. 20 grand and so that's how it happened he literally wow. just was like hey i'm writing this movie we did it i was super nervous the whole time um and after we were done he's like all right we're wrapped and stuff and then he's like i gotta start editing it and then he like disappeared because he was so busy doing that and i started roofing at this point so i was working myself i was delivering pizza roofing finally finished it we watched it on the avid it was old school you yeah. know there's no adobe pro or anything it was the old like steam backs and stuff and so we watched it on this little monitor in the video store and i was like oh that's cool like uh, you know but i didn't think anything of it he's like i'm gonna try to get it in these film festivals and again he sort of disappeared because he was so busy trying to cut it and get the film festival so we stopped really hanging out technically um i would see him here and there and he'd update me about stuff um and yeah and then he's like hey you know i want we we're going to sundance um and <laughs> when he came back he's like it got bought and we're gonna make a couple more i'm gonna write our characters in again which was mall rats and i was like all right i'm in and then he's like then he calls back he's like dude you have to audition you can't be nervous like the first one because the first one i was so nervous that i'd be like hey like right now how there's four of us i'd be like hey can you press record on all the cameras and go outside can you go outside too and i'm just gonna talk to jack because i'm nervous with you two watching me but i was i was super nervous but too so kevin's like dude like who's gonna operate the camera who's gonna use the sound i'm like i don't know just press record and run so i made dave <laughs> klein the dp and scott Mosier and anyone else who didn't have <laughs> Just locked be. off the shot. Yeah, and, left. and they would go. I'd make them go wow. inside the convenience store. So it was just me and Kevin outside, and like one other person. And then if we were inside, I'd ask everyone to go outside. That's how nervous I was. So I'd be like, snooched to the nooch. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was really hard. I finally got through it. And then you know, that's why part of it I think is why you know Kevin didn't tell them all of that. But at the same time, he didn't. I think he didn't fight as hard. And and again, it was his first studio. He was excited, but they made me audition. Thank goodness, all the way up till we shot the first scene in Mallrats. It's a scene where I'm like, "Do it, dog." Um, they were the producers were there watching, and they didn't pay for me to be there. I had to sleep on Kevin's floor because they're like, "Look, 
we we have someone we want and but i know you want muse if he can get through the first couple scenes and we we're happy with him then we'll put him up in the hotel and we'll start paying him and he's got the job <laughs> but until that first day i had to sleep on kevin where everyone else got room in their hotel room yeah. they were getting paid for rehearsals they got flown out there kevin had to fly me out and i had to sleep on his floor <laughs> you see that's that's like the most per like snapshot perfect example of like what happens when indie directors mm. sell a movie in Hollywood <laughs> and it's like hey we love that thing that you just sold and it was perfect and amazing and got all these accolades and it's like we want you to make more for us but you're gonna make it how we want you to make yeah, it yeah yeah it's a it's a bum it was a bummer it was a bummer again the good thing is thank goodness they finally were like okay he did it yeah so I, I got through it and I got the job and we shot mall rats of course but so again they made me audition so I got out here and it was again super surreal and then I go home and then I come back out a couple times and I wind up, I, I guess I met, I forget how I met Kim, but I'll, all I know is I wind up meeting uh, somebody and then I'll tell everyone the, the wrap up of the story. So I meet someone, we go out, meet a couple other people and we're hanging out um, and, I'll, and like we stay out all night and we're hanging out and having a good old time. And all of a sudden I wake up in the morning and I'm in a car and like half asleep. And I just remember having this moment. We're at a red light and everyone's chatting in the car and I look up and I was like, this is crazy to myself. I said it to myself. Um, Cause I would be embarrassed to say it out loud at that point, now I'm not. But I would look there up and I go, this is crazy. I'm in the car with Lionel Richie's kid Ozzy Osbourne's kid and Rod Stewart's kid. <laughs> this is crazy, dude. <laughs> Which was, it was so, my, you know, my mom grew up listening to Rod Stewart and Lionel Richie. And then my brother, I have a brother who's eight years older than me. And he listened to Black Sabbath and Ozzy all the time. So I was into it. He, you know, even had tattooed on his friggin' hands and stuff, <laughs> Ozzy and stuff. Um, my brother, Tony. So again, I knew all about it. And it was just was such a surreal moment for me that like, and again, I'll still never forget that moment moment because you know and then years later it's great because then i got to we got to know each other but it was it was a weird but amazing moment for me man equally it weird was, moment for me yeah. because like growing up the way i grew up whatever like i was stoner metalhead yeah, kid yeah. Dude, yeah. I had fucking I had yeah. Jane Silent Bob action figures yeah, at home, yeah, awesome. and like yeah. his Kim knew yeah, that I was yeah. a huge fan yeah. of yours, and so she called me and she's like, hey. I'm with Jay Muse from Jay and Sly and Bob. Like, come hang out with us. So I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Awesome. So it was very, it was mutual. Which is funny too, because again, I didn't know that aspect. You know, what I mean, yeah. I didn't know that side of the thing, which makes it even more amazing. So, but it was, it was awesome. And again, it's it, it, again to this day, I'll never forget because it was again. And I told the first part because it was, it, it really was for me. Because again, it's got to be different for you. And not so much like still meeting people. I'm sure like you're like, oh, that person. But growing up in California, it, it wasn't so much like, oh, Hollywood, uh, California is beautiful. Like it kind of it kind of was because I, I wasn't born in L.A. I grew up in England for the most part. Oh, you did. And so like uh, when yeah. we did move out here in the late 90s and. Mm. But even still, like, my dad was never, like, a Hollywood in-crowd guy. He yeah, was yeah. fucking crazy Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, and, like, yeah. it's not like, my, you know, we would be at events all the time. And, mm. you know, my parents don't hang out with people. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, there was yeah. never, like, famous people yeah, at the yeah. house. And if yeah. it were, if they were, it was like, oh, look, like, it would be, like, Bon Jovi or something. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was just different. And so yeah. at that time period, we, I think we were... It was right when we started filming the Osbournes, yeah. and and I just started kind of getting plugged into kind of the the scene in L.A. So like stuff was exciting for me too because yeah. I'm like oh shit nice. and it's funny I was I was with Kim uh, on the weekend and we were laughing about like the first time her and I ever hung out and I was like I was like 15 or 16 she was you know she's a few years older than me and I can remember I met her out at a bar and I was like oh this chick's so hot mm. like she's so cool mm. and like we we were just kind of hanging out at this club uh cuz back then you know 15 year olds yeah. at clubs yeah. it was totally fine <laughs> yeah. and she um like we exchanged numbers and I remember she called me one night and she's like hey what are you doing and I'm like I don't know I'm like it's fucking 15 mm. and yeah. she's like me and my friend are going to come pick you up we're going to go to a movie and I was like okay and I was like so I was like oh my god this is like the greatest thing ever yeah. these like two hot chicks are going to pick me up yeah. and we went to this movie and like Kim got in a fight with this guy sat in front of us. It was like this whole fucking thing. But like, 
it was kind of surreal. Yeah, yeah. Like I would just find yeah. myself kind of like you in these scenarios where you're yeah. like, what the shit? Yeah. Dude, even yeah. like I can remember, well, I mean, backing up a bit, you know, your career, you fucking worked with everyone, Jay. Yeah. Like literally yeah. everyone. And it's, do you ever like think about that? Oh like, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, definitely. Dude, I mean, George it, Collin. I know, yeah. And Alan Rickman and Ben, I do, I do. And it's interesting because again, some people still, they, and I wish, I wish, I, again, I appreciate it. I appreciate it now and then, but I feel like there's missed opportunities because I feel like some of them I was so nervous. Like again, George Carlin, I was so sort of, he and Kevin would talk and use these big words and they would talk about his stand up and his books and Kevin would be like, I read all your books and they would talk about stuff that I couldn't really relate to it, so I would just sit and watch, which is still amazing. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying like, yeah, so it definitely is surreal, so much so that like there's a bunch of people we worked with that I don't feel like I ever got to really hang out with and yeah. chat with because I was sort of intimidated and, and stuff like that. Like, um, But again, yeah, I mean, I got the... You know, my biggest thing I always think about is I got to not lightsaber, but sort of lightsaber fight with Mark Hamill. It's yeah, like, dude. It's yes. like surreal to me, right? <laughs> and I got to hang out in a car with Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, and and she was really sweet and stuff. And and but yeah, no, believe me, it's it is surreal. Again, all the Chris Rock and everybody. It's like sitting there. Sometimes I just sit across. We'll be doing dialogue. They'll be doing their dialogue, and I'm just like, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I'm sitting across Chris Rock, and he's like, I'm like bouncing dialogue off him. It's like Will Ferrell, like Will Ferrell, I dance with. Um, one of my favorite stories shooting Jay and Son Bob Strike Back. We're about to do the scene um, where we run through the tunnel, and I jump off. Jay and Bob jump off. Um, and the Suzanne the monkey catch us so we're hanging and Will Ferrell goes uh, and he tries to run it's like a spoof on Fugitive mm -hmm. he goes to run to chase us and he jumps out of the tunnel so they had the prop in the studio on the stage this big tunnel but they had it like we blocked it out and they had a re they're like oh we have to add a couple more lights so you guys hang out for a minute so we're all standing there everyone's chatting and stuff and at the time we were in the every time I got in the dressing room, I put on that song. It just came out. So she called me in the bathroom. Wasn't me. So they called me in the shower. <laughs> so I'd play it every time. And every time Will would walk in to get his hair and makeup, we'd be playing that. And he'd be like, this song again. But anyway, we're in the tunnel and we're waiting. And all of a sudden I was like, na, 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 na. and then all of a sudden he spins me around. And he goes, wasn't me. And he starts dancing <laughs> with me, right? And humming it with me. And I was like, this is crazy. I'm dancing with Will Ferrell right now. Singing Shaggy, wasn't me. You know, it's, it was amazing. But uh, yeah, there's definitely been tons. Judd Nelson, I mean, it's it's, it's yeah. crazy. So, but it is, it's, it's been awesome. I mean, I've, I've really feel lucky. And bless again. It wasn't something I planned on doing. Even after Clerks, I wasn't planning on doing it before, or during, or after Clerks. Clerks really was like you said, just a bunch of friends. Kevin was like, "I'm making this thing," and I put you in, and I'm like, "Whatever." Um, and then afterwards, like I went back to work and roofing and stuff. And then he's like, "We're gonna do Mallrats," and that's when I was like, "Oh my god, this is a studio movie!" And all of a sudden, we're in Minnesota, and there's per diem. I remember the first time they gave me this envelope, and they're like, "Here's your per diem." I'm like, "What's that?" And they're like, "It's your cash for the week." I'm, I open it up, and there's like three hundred dollars cash for. So like, it's just for spending money for the week while you're here. I'm like, "This is amazing," you know. <laughs> and I remember I got stunt pump. I mean, they stopped doing this uh, years ago, and they stopped doing the per diem. I realized they started giving checks would be added to your yeah exactly your per diems in your check. I know, right? Like that changed, but they also in the beginning beginning way back then they'd give you the stunt coordinator could give you stunt bumps if you did your own stunts mm -hmm. and i never did stunts but like the easter bunny and mall rats when i did the punch and i'm like this is for brody and i punched the easter bunny he considered that a stunt and he was like stunt bump here's 200 dollars cash i was like this is awesome I'll let me do more stunts <laughs> yeah i mean and uh so just stuff like that like again it was it, mall rats is always will be my favorite um, always because it was just the first studio movie and everything was surreal, like walking in the mall and we're on set and there's wardrobe and there's stunt guys and like 40 people and stuff. And uh, anyway, it was it was awesome. So and it's still awesome. But it's yeah. again, it's like, it, well, it goes when it's new. It's like, oh, my yeah. like I'm in the arena now. This is crazy. Yeah. And again, but it's always it's I've luckily had almost everything I've done. I've had fun. I haven't 
Luckily, I haven't worked with anybody. There's been people I, I don't really chat with mm -hmm. and don't connect with, but there's not been anyone that I'm like, oh my God, I can't stand being around this person. Yeah. Luckily, luckily that's been the case. Because um, again, that's a question I'll get a lot of times if I do Q and A somewhere as people will be like, who's the worst person you ever worked with and butt heads with and didn't like? And I'm like, really, I've been lucky and there's not been yeah. anyone, so. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been it's, amazing, man. You've got you've got quite a journey. It, know, it's been fun. It, you know, I know you kind of focus on you know you and Kevin do talk a lot about your you, your sobriety, your mm. struggles, this and that. Mm. Like you you know, this podcast is called Ghost and Grit. You know, mm. we talk about like what's the where does everyone get their grit from? Like, what, where is your mm. you know your your perseverance, your you know desire to like, hey, you know what, I want to keep going and figuring out myself, mm. get better, get whole. Where where did that come from for you? Uh, so you mean like where like where you know you're listen none of us have to be sober none of yeah, us have yeah. to get our life together like I, what where did that come from what 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 made you want to get I your think, shit together I think in the beginning uh, for me honestly I feel like in the beginning it was work like again a lot in the beginning I feel like when I started to use and started getting us every time we do a movie Kevin would be like starting with dogma. He's like, you can't do dogma if you're using. Like, you just, I can't bring you out to Pittsburgh, shoot this movie, and like you get you're strung out and stuff like that. So I got sober the first time I went to rehab then, and then to shoot dogma. We get through dogma by the end. I'm using again, mm -hmm. you know. And then all of a sudden, you know. And then I'm not to say that I was always about to shoot a movie beforehand, but definitely a big chunks of it was dogma we were about to do i had to get better we were about to do jay and bob strike back and i had to get better and stuff it was right after strike back i used again and i went to uh, up to promises where i met dk which is great um i guess i shouldn't say that but it's not his real name um <laughs> but anyway but i i do feel like luckily back then it was that because and i feel like um, that helped me like each time. And I always wanted to be, of course, I always dreamed of like, Hey, I want a family and I want this normal life. Um, and that's been forever, you know, honestly. Um, but again, it was tough for me because again, I, I had a mom at that point when I started, I, every time I'd come home from filming and doing stuff and I'm not blaming this, but I do feel like it, I just was in an environment that my mom was sick. She was dying from AIDS. So she was like, I oh, would dude, I didn't yeah, I did take care. Yeah, she I don't died. I knew that, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't talk about it much. Yeah. But yeah, my mom got out of jail She uh, and I moved in with her because she had a HIV and then it got worse. Um, and I lived with her and my sister. My sister is a dope fiend. So my sister's using, my mom's sick and, you know, uh, whittling away. Um, and, and so... You know, it was tough being around, and I feel like I would wind up slipping and getting uh, using again. Mm. And then I'd go do a movie and come out to California, and I'd be and, it, and I'd be like, I got to get better. I want to make this movie. Um, but yeah, it was just tough. But I, I just feel like I'm just saying I feel like that kept me going. Kevin helping me out. I mean, Kevin was always there and always sort of you know has always helped me get my back. So I feel like between Kevin and and me working doing the movies. Uh, helped me for years and years and then I got to a point where like um, I, I had I had a warrant so I got arrested and I had a warrant out in Jersey so I, I was in Cali um, and I just was like almost homeless I was living at, with this girl our sh electric got shut off and the heat got shut off and we literally were like I was peeing in a bucket because the bathroom was upstairs there was no lights and I was lazy and I didn't want to like hold a candle to go upstairs <laughs> It was gross. Um, and I set the couch, we had the candle on the couch and we both nodded out and the couch set on fire and like we almost set the apartment on fire and all that. And I'm like, I just, I gotta get better. I gotta be yeah. better. So that was the first time I went and turned myself in and I went to rehab for six months and then I stayed sober almost five years. And that was right around the time that when we started hanging, yeah. I came back, I did six months, moved back to Cali, moved in and that's when we started hanging. Uh, and live together and all that. And I felt really good. And, you know, and I feel like, uh, you know, that sort of kept me going for a bit. And then, you know, in my head, not going to meetings the last year of being sober, which was almost five or four or five, um, I got kidney stones. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we need to give you Demerol. And I was like, no, 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 I don't need Demerol. And they're like, you're not gonna be able to pass the stone if you don't. And I'm like, all right, give it to me. I, I can, I can handle this. No, man. As soon as I got the Demerol shot, there was no support really around me anymore. At this point, I had just started dating my wife, mm. well, Jordan. 
And so, it, you know, like when you meet someone in the beginning and you move in together and it's just you and them for like every, so I wasn't really hanging out with anybody sober, wasn't going to meetings. Yeah, kind of. Uh, and yeah, so I just, I couldn't, uh, you know, I got the Demerol shot, they gave me painkillers to go home with and I'll, next thing you know, I'm taking 50 narco, uh, whatever it was. Narcos? It? Narcos a day. Literally I was taking like, I needed 25 to 30 just to be normal, but I was taking like 50 a day, wow. which was a mess. Um, and then finally, you know, uh, after about a year and a half of that, then I went back, told Kevin, Kevin's like, let's do the, let's do the podcast. He's like, I was like, I want to do a podcast. I'm three months sober. And he's like, look, if we do it, you have to talk about your stuff. You mm -hmm. can't, you got to be accountable. You got to keep it out every day. So you're accountable to everyone you talk to. And it helped man doing the podcast. It really did. Like I'd be in Starbucks and they'd be like, yo, how many years, you know, how many days sober do you have? And I'd be like a year and three months. And they'd be like, yeah. And like, it was pretty awesome. Nice, so dude. like everyone I saw, like I knew was watching me at this mm -hmm. point back in the day, I'd be like, no one knows, no one knows, <laughs> which I know they know. Like if I ran into you, I'm sure you were like, oh, music and that stuff. I know Mike McGinnis, a bunch told me he ran dk always knew. oh yeah but um but yeah so it was nice because it's like i couldn't hide from people because it now it was like even just walking in the starbucks people would be like hey man i listen to your podcast it rocks but i think of course now and and even this next time it's like meeting jordan i you know i really cared about jordan i really cared about kevin kevin was sort of fed up and was like this is it man like i don't want it like in the last, you do last the, shot yeah, it definitely was it definitely was um, and so between that and Jordan and wanting the family, um, and wanting to continue to work and just be, you know, a, a, a productive member of society, I was like, <laughs> I want to get, and I really did. I wanted to get sober. I wanted to get sober the first time I really did. And that's why I turned myself in and got, you know, when I was saying before, but, and I got four years, um, the bummer is, is I had that slip up. I, uh, again, I got too cocky being like, oh, I'm good. I'm hanging with this girl and we're yeah. good. It's been four years. I'm almost but five years that's, sober. I mean, that's such a common, yeah. a common thing. I've, yeah. I see it with so many people. Yeah. So, but again, I, it's, it's, again, it's been, it's been nice. It's like July 2nd was 13 years. Nice, so bro. congratulations. Thank you. Dude. Thank you. So it's, it's been, it's funny cause it's now it's been like four, four and a half years two years messing up than 13 so it's like yeah it's starting to get longer so again i feel good and again being able to do this and work and stuff is, is a big help so. yeah no i mean it's it it, it kind of mm -hmm. and the kids well the kids is, <laughs> yeah. is like you, you don't want to be the fuck up for, yeah, for your kids no. as nothing was yeah yeah so it's uh yeah. but yeah i mean i, I love you know the thing about your and i's friendship it's always like you know, we'll go years without seeing each other. And I always just feel like it just picks up like right where yeah. it left off, you know? And I always think that's like the true sign of like friendship or, you know, we'll jump in a call of duty, you know, every now yeah, and yeah. then. And it's, uh, you know, it, uh, I've always uh, appreciated your friendship and like the, the adventures here, that we've yes. had is yeah. like the, you know, God, 20 something years. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. You know, what's uh, what I'm just thinking about while you were saying all that. And I, I agree is one of the things that I'm so bummed about is uh, when we lived at the Falcon's Nest, we yeah. call it, um, Jack was really sweet and got us all that were sober, because not everyone in the house was sober, that we had a couple of normies there. Um, he got us this chain, a chain, the symbol and diamonds and stuff, and I, it was like my prized possession. And a girl, I had stay over my house, a random, you know, person that come come spend the night with me um stole it i believe she stole it because I, I thought i might have lost it and i felt bad i was like i can't accuse that person but it seems like the only logic because i'm like i look tore the place apart yeah. and it bums me out so much i forgot i forgot that i did that yeah it was again yeah. so do you do you remember yeah, what happened I, uh my one my one i got lost i was hiking and it fell out of my pocket Oh. And then I don't know what happened. Uh, I think because I, I got I, think, I got Brian one, and I also got uh, McGinnis one. McGin I, have a, yeah. I think McGinnis might still have I his. Bet. I bet. Yeah, because Brian also. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. Um. But anyway, it was it was a real bummer. It was a bummer. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. Anywho. Um. Mm. What was I gonna say? You know what's funny? I was I I was I think about this because I just see it in the. Uh, I obviously don't. You know, he's your, your boy, so I don't know how much you can say, but like, you know in the last like couple years and it's like Ben getting back together with Jennifer mm -hmm. and our, there was a window when 
we were playing cards over at Kevin's house all the time. Yeah. And it was like when he broke up with Jennifer the first time, like yeah. the, he was there all the time. Yeah. And I could just remember like being like, oh, wow, like I'm in the middle of like the benefit breakup. This is so <laughs> it weird. Was. It was like everywhere yeah. and everything. Yeah. And like, and it would just be like, oh, hey, man, how's it going? And I'm feeling so awkward and weird. It, it is crazy how much I feel like the tabloids like he really does have like I feel like a target on his back. Yeah. I remember like you said it was in the paper all the time, and I it's like you would see him, and I could imagine like I I just can't imagine. I remember going to his house once with Meal, and he was he was like, "Can you do you guys mind washing, helping out, and washing my cars? I have something I have to do." I was like, "This will be fun. I get to drive this car." And I remember there was like five paparazzi literally outside his <laughs> gate, dude. And we rolled the windows up, and and Brian put his helmet hat down, and so with the hat, like the Boston Red Sox hat, they started chasing us, dude. We started like trying to outrun him and <laughs> stuff, and they'll run red lights and everything, dude. It's crazy. Yeah. And finally, they pulled up next, and then all of a sudden, Brian rolls the window down, and he's like. And they're like, oh no! And they got so much. But the point is, is like, I like, yes, we were part. Like, there was so much going on with that. And then yes, and the sweet thing is, is I honestly, I you know, it's like after that, I see him a little bit, and then I didn't talk to him for a long time. Um, I run into him here and there sometimes, but it's not like we chat or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. But he invited uh, Kevin and I to his wedding, oh, which nice. was really nice. So Kevin and I went out. We got to go to Georgia. Um, Savannah, Georgia, which was beautiful, and went to it because he has a uh, what is it called? A uh, big old home. Yeah, like a big. That's the whole property, whatever. But we went on the. It was so nice. It was like all white. We had to wear white, all white oh. for the wedding. Did you get it yourself a linen suit? I did. I got a nice white suit, and then I then afterwards I got the linen for the after party. Okay. Um, which was really nice. <laughs> um, it was fun. It was really nice and sweet of them because I was like, "There's no way they invite me." Like yeah. it's like. You know what I mean? Because I imagine they only have room for so many people. Mm. Ben gets to invite people. Jen gets to invite people. I'm like, I'm not. But it was really sweet. Um, but again, same here. Like, I've seen them since then a couple times. Um, but it is it is weird to see. Like, we were there, and then we were here, and then yeah, there. Yeah. Especially, I'm at the wedding, and she, like, sang a song to him about 20 years, you know, 20 years ago. And then, I don't know. But <laughs> it was like, I was like, oh, my God, we were around there. You yeah, know? yeah, we were so, we, front row seat for that one. And so much fun, though, those blackjack nights, right? Oh, my nights, God, right? yeah, that was, was great. Really, it was I, fun. And then, but Kevin didn't, wasn't Kevin, like, one of the first guys in Hollywood to stop blogging? Because he, oh, yeah. yeah, he was like, like so. so early on in the kind of yeah. blogging era, and I, yeah. I can remember he was he would write about the the blackjack game all the time. Yeah, and he he wrote like that's how the pod, part of the podcast started. Um, he had wrote like me and my shadow. He mm -hmm. wrote blog this me and my shadow, which really hit it off about our friendship and him meeting me and like yeah. how he thought I was this and then me struggling and the first time he found that I was using drugs and, and oh, anyway it was this thing and that's sort of like how we see he's like I want to talk about this and we stood yeah. but yeah he I feel like he, you know because he started a message board well way back I remember it was like the message board for uh, viewer skew Ming Chen wrote it for his college and Kevin saw it and was like, can you do more stuff? So there was a message board. It was before you could just like instant go back and forth chat. It was like, you write a message and you wait for someone to respond. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he started that and then he started writing blogs on there. And then like, so yeah, I do feel like he started like yeah. way, way before he would write stuff constantly and put it on view a skew board and like write these things. Um, so it's interesting. I also feel like Milanakis, I feel like, has was one of the first people to start doing YouTube stuff. Yeah. Like he he came out to Cali and got a, a sh job on Tonight Show because he, he like sang that song about the Super Bowl or mm -hmm. whatever. And he was doing videos like back in 97 or 98. It's crazy now how things are just like... Totally. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, that was another thing. Milanakis moved into the house after I moved out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was fucking... <laughs> What weird it, times! It really what, was. What like, what's been what's been your favorite thing about it all? About just like love? your your journey, like um, your fucking. I mean, I guess it would be meeting people and getting the chance to come out here again. I do love living out here in the weather and stuff like that, um, and just all the traveling. Like, I really think if I didn't get to do. If I didn't get to start, if I didn't do the movie, I feel like I would hopefully, I feel like I'd either be in Jersey with my own roofing business mm -hmm. or I would have continued to do drugs and like ended up, I don't know where. Um, 
and I never traveled and never would have traveled. But now I've been to Australia twice or three times, and I've been to London, Scotland, um, you know, uh, Hawaii a couple times. Like, it's it's been amazing. And again, living here, and I met my wife here, which now I have two kids, and uh, all the people I've crossed paths with, and with, and just the things I've got, things I just didn't ever plan on doing. Because again, I never, never once all the way up to even after I won't even say up to even until mall rats I don't which was 95 um graduating high school all that I never thought like I'm gonna be I want to do entertainment and I want to do movies or I want to do this and that never even crossed my mind like I even after we filmed clerks I was so nervous and so uncomfortable doing it I wasn't like that was so much fun like I could picture myself doing that and make you know it it was uh so yeah, it just it's it's been surreal. Again, it's just yeah. like, um, like, let's talk about ghosts. Let's and, do it and the weird shit that we've gone and done together. <laughs> Definitely. What did you think when I when when we called you, being like, hey, uh, Kelly had to bow out of a Bigfoot hunt. Yeah. Do you want to come? What I, did you think? I, I, honestly, I'm not just saying this. I was super stoked. Hey, honestly, but because a because I just thought like, oh my god, I'm gonna get to go hang out. Um, where we were going, I forget. I, I always get confused where we went first. We were, I, we were in Idaho first. Idaho first. So I was like, I get to go to Idaho and hang out with Jack for like whatever amount of days. And I just really was thinking that I get to go in the woods and this. Again, the idea of searching for uh, Bigfoot was like, all right, this could be cool. Like, like to try to really explore and and find out and see if we could find something and any proof, um, and meet some people who have had experiences. I thought it was cool and going to be a cool experience, um, and hopefully if the show would turn out fun. But again, I and I'm not just saying this because we're here. But I did the for that one. The first thing is like I get the, I haven't seen Jack and spent time with him in a while. It'll be fun. I yeah. really think we could have a lot of fun doing this. So that was my that was my first thought um, when we did it. And then I was like, I hope we like get to go and do it and stuff. Um, so yeah, it really was, and it was. It was. I I, I had a blast doing it and it and it's cool to see how it works because again I've never done you know all the different little things I've done um I don't I've never really done like hey let's go in the woods and search this out and we're going to spend time here and see if we get anything yeah. so it, I I did I had a lot of fun and it was cool so yeah and then and then you uh you suggested bringing Jamie out for uh for Skinwalker that was that was your suggestion yeah yeah, yeah. it was and it was fun that it was, was so much fun was. man it was so fucking weird yeah and i just i honestly like that might be like looking back on like all the paranormal shows i've done i don't think i'd ever laughed as hard yeah like when when us three are working together when we did bigfoot and then when we went uh to mm. ashmore which by the way i've got some footage i want to show you from that all right all right um was dude i just i remember going home every night and like texting my chick yeah. just being like it's so fucking funny well yeah it's it's great because it's like to die the, it's funny to see like i love watching when jamie's like you know being whole neurotic yeah and then he'll be like well what i can't say that but you can't you know like <laughs> he gets it's funny the dynamic each personality and stuff yeah. and it was again the f fun that yeah it, it was a blast and that yeah. one was I enjoyed this one, and I've enjoyed all three actually, pretty much almost equally. But you're right, the Skinwalker was a lot of fun because, again, too for me, I feel like I've really like seeing some of the stuff there was like, wait a sec, yeah. and we got to see a full rainbow. I mean, I oh yeah, dude. It, I didn't think full I would rainbow. enjoy it so much, but I was like, wow, I didn't realize all these years I've seen rainbows I've never seen literally from end to end a rainbow. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. It was too. rad. So here, let me show you, let me show you some clips. Um, this mm. is when we were in the boiler room. Hey, Joey, you in oh. here? Let's turn the ghost box on. Is this normal? Yeah. He's talking. Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who lives here? There's a body. I heard there's a body. Me too, me too. What the f is that thing? What the f is that thing, dude? 
Be one of the forgotten bodies buried out back. Where's the body? Is it by the tree? Who's in here with us? Kill. No! Did you just. No! Did you just. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> and then this one. We had some good shit happen on yeah. this investigation. You need a sign, just any sign that you are present in this place. Make a noise. Come on, Jack heard a noise in here before. Let's hear that again. Put the light on. Put the light on. What the f dude? That sounded like a window, but there's no window here. Make that noise again. Oh, it's following us, dude. Yeah. Put the light on it. No. <laughs> no. Be definitive. <laughs> Be definitive. They understand that you're here. <laughs> that was loud. <laughs> Came out good, right? I like it. I like the then it, when you hear the tap, it's like ding. It's great. Yeah, you gotta get the suspense. Oh. I like it. Um, I know every time we've ever gone and investigated anything, you're always like, the Jersey Devil, the Jersey Devil. Is yeah. that something you grew up kind of knowing about? Yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, again, it's like the the hockey team's named after it. it you know, people would talk about it and stuff, but it was never, I wouldn't say it's a, in our town where growing up, it was never like um, a ghost story or anything. It was just like, look, there's the Jersey Devil. If you go to the Pines, like, you might see it type yeah. of thing. Um, What's the pines? A, is that like a, an area they call yeah, the pines? Yeah, the woods and stuff, okay. like this big area. Um, and again, this the, the backstory. You know, it's it, it's interesting. It's Do you know interesting. the backstory? Y yeah, you know, it's it's supposed to be the leads. It's, it's this family from Jersey that like this prominent family way back, and the woman, the wife, um, you know, is her thirteenth child. Oh. Um, and she didn't. She was like, I hope he's a demon or whatever, because she was like. The, the the dad was drinking and never around or whatever and she already had so many kids um and i guess they say the baby was born normal and then after about three to four minutes the ba the the baby started to like transform into this this creature that they all describe you know however they describe it with the wings and the the horse head and horns and supposedly killed the midwives and right like slashed them in the throat and then <laughs> snuck out of the chimney and then has been haunting the woods forever since eating <laughs> cattle and i guess there was like a period too um again which is way long ago um they said that you know they that there was all these things happening within this like one week where like they found all these weird tracks like mm. running around with their dead chickens and dead cattle um and roaming around like just slaughtering th animals and things so yeah. okay i don't know so it's cool stuff like that but i, I mean again i i think there's a it, there because you know i think is it Ru Rutgers and what one of the schools in jersey i think they they have a like a teacher who talks about it too like again so oh, there's I feel like, like a there's class people, you can take yeah i feel like there's a guy there's like some teachers that really like believe and and really tried to like um explore it and and try to see about it did I mean, you did you see that uh the, the the picture that recently i mean it was a few years ago now but um it was on the news and it was uh all right so this is a jersey devil sighting oh uh it was on abc news 
and all right, let's full screen this. Now, oh. this is something, okay, uh, I'll play it and we'll kind of talk through it. So this gentleman, um, he was driving and he, and he stops his car and he, and he saw this thing flying around and yeah. took the fucking picture. So he kind of goes on the news and is explaining like, hey, like I, I saw this Jersey Devil Ooh, yeah. creature thing and yeah. I mean, what do you what do you think that I mean, is? That's, I, I don't know because it looks it uh, it looks like what you would imagine imagine from drawings and description the the horns they say more of a horse head and but the wings uh, and the horns but it does look like a goat a straight up goat with something on the back yeah with horns. a beak and a horns yeah but I I kind of think it looks a little bit like a griffin yeah I guess it does it does yeah. totally. So it's it's interesting. It's interesting because again, that's a really, it's a weird thing that f with the trees and everything, it's be hard to fake. Like yeah, I like say, what but... do you do? Take a fucking goat and throw it in the air and take a picture? Yeah, no. And then <laughs> I was thinking, like, what if what if it's like a? But you could tell that's not. I was like, what if it's like a huge eagle that's trying to take a goat and eat oh, it? Oh yeah. But again, I don't think that looks enough like a bird. Like yeah, no, no wings, it's true. Man. It does look like wings because it even looks like right here. Yeah. The the wings, the horns, the beak, you're right. But do you know anyone that's ever seen a Jersey Devil? Have you ever no. was there ever like the old guy in town that was like, Oh yeah, I grew up seeing the devil? No, no. I think you know why? Because I think for me in my area, it was more about the Marble Mental Hospital. Oh. That's right, it, which was very close to where is I that, grew up. Is that still there, or did they tear I, it down? I'm not sure. I don't. I haven't checked, but it was a huge hospital. Um, and they let everyone go. There was that year that they like had to let people yeah, go. Yeah, during Reagan when they yeah. Do you know, I had you and, know I found an interesting story about that. You know, everyone blames like Reagan for kicking everyone out the mental hospitals. I, Do you? So that's like the whole thing. They're like, oh, Reagan yeah, shut down the state run yeah. hospitals. I just found this out. It was JFK that implement. They basically wrote this law, being like, we're yeah. gonna shut them down by 1989. They needed 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And that whole thing happened because JFK was like, nope, we're shutting it down. And it happened under Reagan. Mm, it was a weird okay, little thing there. Yeah. It was, it, so they had released them. And then I heard that they're on the property that, that when they got, right before they got released, the nut, there was people still staying in these little cabins on the property. Mm -hmm. And that one of the people released went and killed all these things. So there was always a story of like, you know, there's a psycho still running around who, got out they let out and they killed all the the nuns that worked there because it's like this huge brick you know messed up hospital and then it's this huge property and then down a bit there's these little like uh, cottages cottages hmm. where i suppose to be that staff worked for years and years for years like way back and they were still there and got killed so again Dude, that was more do, of our story we so. should do like two episodes in jersey we'll do the the hospital and we'll go look for the devil if it's still there honestly it would be great i, I mean uh i've seen it before it was shut down and it's mm -hmm. been years and again it's been probably at least 20 years or 18 years since i feel yeah. like i've seen it been there if it's still there it is it would be good the property's huge the wood there's woods it'd be creepy it would be a great episode because mm -hmm. i bet there's some hauntings there For honestly sure. yeah. if there's so we should definitely look in it we should go there like i said even if not then we do this yeah. ourselves we go there look for this and this yeah that could be a fun yeah. one heck yeah i yeah, like dude. it i'm down oh oh no you're good um all right jay muse it's been this has been fun it is. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Again, everyone, check out my uh, check out the cruise. I think it'll be fun. You should come on the cruise. I know you got four I, kids. I would so totally come on the cruise. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's three days, but it's uh, February 23rd to the 26th, 2024. And it's Miami to Nassau? Ma Miami to Nassau. Yeah, man. And again, there's podcasts. There's going to be stand-up comedians and gambling and, and all sorts of fun. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you could go, it would be fun. But again, I know it's tough, not easy yeah, to get no, away we'll for see. three days. We'll see. Um, but check that out and also Twitch. I don't, I'm oh, still yeah, on dude, Twitch. Fucking tell, talk about Twitch. So Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash J-A-Y-M-E-W-E-S, J-Muse, and I play video games on their Call of Duty and Fortnite, and I sometimes open boxes. People send me stuff, and I'll open it on stream and chat, and I've been doing it for like... Uh, four years now. Well, thank you again, thank you, Twitch, Cruise, Cruise, um, and amusing stories. Uh, you can find that out on our J Muse website. I'll be doing some comedy and through the rest of the year. Check cool. me out.
And, uh, oh, yeah, so the episode that we did, um, it's coming out in the fall, like around October, November, uh, and people can check that out on Travel Channel, and then later it'll be on Discovery Plus and Max. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Check that out. I'm excited about seeing that. It's and I'd be... like to see the feedback, because I yeah. think it's a great one. Oh, totally. And so, awesome, Thank brother. you. Thank you. I'll see you soon.